Hello gardeners, hello my dear gardening friends. Privacy is such an important word in today's world. We are seeking the shelter of our gardens, the privacy of our gardens, away from all the intrusions and interruptions which surround us in our modern world. So today in this video we are going to, uh, to talk about privacy in our backyards. How to make sure that our gardens are the sanctuary of uh, life and relaxation for us and our families. Usually people, when they arrive at their empty lot, at their new property, and they're facing this very empty space, they have no idea where to begin. And when they see some offensive sight, for example, and there are plenty of them, the back door of uh, the bakery, the offensive uh, compost pile of your neighbors, the general empty lot of your neighbor, and you're going to stare at each other during dinner times or family activities, the impulse is right away to install this massive uh, permanent structure which will block the eyesore right away permanently and for good. Well, I would encourage you not to go into that direction right away because um, such uh, impulse uh, can have a lot of uh, negative effects later in your garden. For example, you can rush, you go in, you install all these permanent barriers blocking all sorts of um, eyesores, and then you might find yourself barricaded into a square of your garden and you're looking at your uh, privacy fences from inside out. So you are barricaded from the whole world and it is especially true to a small garden, small or medium-sized gardens, where we have to be very careful how we screen unwanted sights, unwanted sounds, and unwanted nature influences. So let's begin with the first major one. How do we prepare our garden not to see the offensive sights? And if you don't know where to begin, I would encourage you to do a, um, a quick um, experiment. You go into the garden and if it's empty, fairly empty garden or a garden which is lacking uh, privacy, you go to the area where you spend the time, your time the most. For example, the sitting area. So you go to your sitting area, you sit there and you look around and you start looking around your garden and you take a mental note. What is good, what is not. So let's follow me. And let's come and sit here. Oh, sun is very strong here. <clears throat> so when I sit here, when I look around and I'm starting to look everything what I see on this side, my uh, left neighbors are blocked by uh, the masses of greenery here, which is good. Here I have my garden. I like it to be open because I want to see what's going on in the garden. When I move further on here, I see right here, I see the windows of my neighbors. So here comes such a thing as selective and very smart um, privacy placements. So you see this abovaiti? This abovaiti was placed here on a purpose because when I'm sitting here, when everybody is resting here on the sofa, and when I'm looking this way, this abovaiti is blocking the view from our neighbor's window. And don't get me wrong, I love my uh, my neighbors but when it, the time, time comes for me to relax here with my book or my uh, cup of uh, drink or just to hang out with my friends in the evening i don't want even to think that somebody would see me so this thing was placed here very strategically and this uh, this abovaiti is going to get bigger and wider i'm not going to trim it so this size it will get bigger and wider and when i sit here this abovaiti would be blocking all the way here. So the advice would be to approach the privacy of your backyard very selectively. You take a look, you take a mental note, what needs to be screened and what doesn't need to be screened. So for example, when you come here, you will see that on both sides of our garden, we have hedges here. 
hedges, of course, are good privacy screens. And that hedge was probably when we bought this house 10 years ago, that hedge was probably this high. And it was not doing anything to create privacy in our backyard because I literally could see everything was happening in my neighbor's backyard. So what we did, we raised that hedge and I will show you how tall it is in comparison to my height. You see how tall it is? So we raised this hedge and then I did some creative pruning here over this hedge. This way, our neighbors for on our right side has their privacy and we have our privacy. Now on that side, let's turn around and look at that side. What do we see on this side? On this side, we see a very slow hedge. And why is that, you would say? This is the area, the only area in our backyard which is very open. The reason why it is open, because we are borrowing our neighbor's view. That view is gorgeous. When you look at it, it has a lot of depth. It has the trees at the back. And when the air in the morning is hazy and blue, you actually can see all that dimension deep down going in. That is the reason we never blocked this view. We never really installed any shrubs or any trees or roses climbing. Nothing was installed there because we love this view and we cherish this view. So my advice for you to be Look around, again, sit in your favorite spot, look around your garden and take a mental note what you like and what you don't like. Here, this area of our garden definitely was, I wouldn't say an eyesore, but it was very uncomfortable. And I remember I told you in my previous video, I'm going to repeat myself, all this area from there to here was an ugly fence, see-through, I believe it's called chain link fence, that metal mesh fence. And instead of installing, you know, the urge is, if we want to install the evergreen uh, uh, row of, let's say, abovitis. So the impulse is right away to install this big, massive row of abovitis one after another and create this wonderful green screenery. So just imagine for a second, take a mental note of all the stretch of back uh, screen from different mediums we used. Just imagine one big fat row of abovitis. Will that be attractive? I don't think so. Abovitis would be very monotonous, very monolithic looking, and uh, honestly, it would be boring. So what we did, we mixed different mediums, and we do have abovitis there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe seven or eight abovitis here. And in this area, before we had those abovitis installed, mind you, come and see. Before these beauties came in here, we had the fence here. You see this fence? Right there. And there is our neighbor's backyard. We love our neighbors, but again, everybody needs privacy. And here we really couldn't play with abovitis being planted in a different shape not just one after another marching by like soldiers. Here in this area, I really didn't have a lot of space to, place with, to play with where I'm going to plant abovitis. But if you have more space and you think that abovitis would be a good choice for you, try to plant them uh, in zigzag fashion or combine abovitis with different medium. For example, here we have a row of abovitis. Then we have barberries here. Then we have self-made vettel fence. I trained uh, barberies to go a little bit here to close that area a bit. Here we have you, a baby you growing, which eventually will close all this area. And by the way, if you have a situation where some of your neighbors has wonderful shrubs or trees, for example, this beauty bush, when it blossoms in spring, it is a showstopper in the garden. But when this beauty bush is not blossoming, it struggles a little bit in summer with dry conditions. Um, so what I do, I, I take care of that beauty bush myself. I throw a little bit of uh, uh, well-aged cow manure there. Even if that beauty bush is in our neighbor's property, 
I make sure that I water it from once in a while. So don't be afraid, my advice would be, if you rely on your neighbor's uh, shrubs and trees, don't be afraid to take care after them and make sure that they are serving their purpose. Because here, just imagine for a minute, if we are going to lose this beauty bush, this is going to be a disaster here. We will, we will automatically see all the backyard of our neighbors. So in my interest, uh, it is for this bush to go and grow and uh, live for many years. So as the advice is, do take care after your neighbor's uh, bushes if your neighbors don't mind. Now let's move to a slightly different topic, how we can um, screen out the unwanted uh, influences on our garden. Let's put it this way. So the most, uh, the lightest one, I would say, we used it at the front of our garden and we are going to move there to show you. The lightest one would be the buffer. And what are the buffers? Buffers are usually plants or light structures which are not meant to block uh, the unwanted sight or unwanted movements, like let's say cars moving on the road. Buffers are used for places where we can't really influence those places, we cannot really separate us from those places, but we can distance us from, from those places to make sure that we have some sort of a barrier between us and annoying situation. This way the space feels bigger. Actually it's not bigger, but it feels bigger. We trick our eyes to perceive space as deeper. So in my situation, the buffer we used in the front of our garden on the grass strip, which runs between the sidewalk and the street. And I will show you two photographs. The one I digged up on the internet. The house, how it looked 10 years ago, and you will see that this strip of land, uh, of the strips of grass in front of the house, you see, doesn't it look so small? House looks like literally on the street. And we have, we don't really have a busy street, but there are cars going in and out. So when we had the house for the first year, I looked around, I thought about it, and me and my husband decided to develop that strip of land. So let's go to the front and I will show you how it looks now. I'm sure a lot of my uh, viewers who watch my channel know about that strip because I talk about it a lot. So here we are in the front of our garden and here we have our strip, our parking strip, which separates our house from the street. And uh, the role of buffers, which is this, this is the buffer right now. We created this uh, front strip to kind of physically separate our uh, front yard from the road. And the role of buffers is not to cancel, not to block the view, because literally we cannot create any uh, strong barrier here. This area is uh, um, in the possession of the town. So the town has uh, the ownership of this land, but we, the owners of the house, take care of this, this land. So if you want to do something like this, develop this strip of grass, make sure you check with your town because all different town rules are different. Our town allows us to plant shrubs and I don't think we have any requirements for height and width. So here we are, instead of grass, we developed a row, uh, whole uh, uh, row of annuals and perennials. We, again, we made a mistake, we planted very uh, thirsty trees, maples here, and they are growing, maturing, making sure that all this is staying super dry. So one more advice, if you want to develop this strip, keep in mind, especially if it's a city lot, that this land here can be very compacted and very dry. So uh, do pay attention to plants, perennials, preferably shrubs, which can survive in dry, maybe shady conditions. So this is the buffer. We distance ourselves from unwanted annoyances. We cannot block them. We cannot have, we don't have influence on uh, eradicating those eyesores. What we can do, we can create something which will make the space between us and annoying eyesore a little bit less annoying and less uh, noticeable. Another example in my garden of uh, unwanted eyesore would be this corner. And the plan is to plant these beautiful uh, hydrangeas here. 
Unfortunately, we had so much rain, so much rain this uh, uh, spring that my hydrangeas, even being famous for not drooping and not falling, it is starting to fall. So what can you do? It doesn't have a, so, a, a, so, a strong scent, but um, in my opinion, this hydrangea is a very old fashioned looking shrub. I love it here and the fact that it matured so well here is just lovely. Unfortunately it drooped a little bit after the last rain. Maybe it will raise up, raise up its heads. But this is another example of what I'm trying to do in my garden with big shrubs block unwanted I saw here. Here on another side of my garden just look here what I'm going to I'm what I'm trying to do. Here this area which is leading to the back of our garden is fairly narrow and what I did I planted abovite not abovitis use uh, here and I'm trying to raise this use into a hedge and I know use mature slowly the choice of use is a great choice for privacy hedges just keep in mind that use mature very slowly these use are what, three years old? No, two years already here. And um, it will take several years for them to be forming some sort of a structure here, some sort of a hedge. Another advice which I wanted to give, I, wanted, I kept in my head for some time. If we want to have a good, strong design, we should be ready to do maintenance, proper maintenance and regular maintenance. For example, I see so many beautiful uh, abovitis growing, making wonderful um, hedges, and then I see they're being overrun by all sorts of wines, and uh, they are not uh, watered in dry uh, times of summer, and abovitis fail. So if you make this commitment and investment into beautiful green hedge, make sure that you take care of that hedge. And um, the green hedge once installed oh you know what these uh, carpenter bees should be more polite here in my garden you know i lost my track of thoughts what i was talking about all right so if, if you planted your abovitis make sure you're committed to keep these uh, babies nice and healthy and the same with all other things in the garden all the planting serving as uh, buffers we take care after them otherwise those plants and those privacy hedges will start uh, failing us and uh, there is nothing worse than to have a row of abovitis and then one is dead we have to take it out and this area looks like a, you know empty gap in the smiling you know in the smiling face one tooth is missing so we don't want to do that Another way how we can use the buffers in the garden would be in the form of all sorts of berms. And I saw the other day I was coming uh, to my town and I was passing by one area which um, the, uh, the property, the owner has the property with one corner into the crossroad. And what we di he did, he did such a lovely clever solution. He just raised the level at the corner, created a very big berm there and he planted all sorts of perennials there and shrubs. And I looked at his property and I said, yes, you're right. If this berm would not exist here, you're, you, I will be just moving into your garden and there would be no distance between you and the road. But there is a very noticeable distance and no very noticeable um, kind of screening or protection because of that that berm so in case you have such situation in your garden where you're facing a crossroad think about berms and basically berm is a raised uh, soil level if you're excavating soil in your garden from somewhere you can just pile it up prepare it and plant whatever you need to plant keep in mind that berms are dryish they're well very fast draining and uh, make sure that you plant there plants which are happy in dry soil. A lot of people make a mistake, they plant beautiful uh, abovitis on berms, which is a mistake. Hello, get out of here. Which is a mistake because abovitis do not like dry conditions, especially during the first year of their uh, life in your garden. So if you like to contribute to the success of my channel, please do subscribe and like this video if you like what I'm creating for you. 
our next video i think would be to walk around the garden and check on the newly introduced roses for this year some people were asking me about it but the next video in this series would be how to make your garden more interesting and bigger and that's my favorite topic because for the last 10 years i'm trying hard to make my garden bigger and look uh, wider than it really is so happy gardening and i will see you next time